In the annals of unsolved mysteries, one name stands out, D.B. Cooper. This story begins on a chilly November day in 1971. Picture a man, nondescript in his appearance, standing about six feet tall, seemingly in his mid-forties. He walks up to the counter of Northwest Orient Airlines and purchases a $20 ticket for flight 305. He introduces himself as Dan Cooper, a name as ordinary as his demeanor. But as we'll soon learn, there is nothing ordinary about this man. As the flight takes off from Portland, this unassuming passenger takes a seat, briefcase in hand. He calls over a flight attendant and hands her a note. Now, in an age where notes passed onto flight attendants usually contained phone numbers or cheesy pickup lines, this one was different. It was a bomb threat. A chill runs through the cabin as he opens his attaché case, revealing a nest of wires, red sticks, and a battery. His demands? Four parachutes and $200,000 in $20 bills. The man who called himself Dan Cooper had now transformed into a figure of threat and mystery. The passengers on the flight, the crew, and soon the entire nation would learn just how serious he was. This wasn't a prank, a joke, or a misunderstanding. This was a real tangible threat, and it was happening thousands of feet up in the air aboard Flight 305. The transformation of a nondescript man into a hijacker, the shift from an ordinary flight into a hostage situation, and a note that turned a briefcase into a potential bomb. All of these marked the beginning of an audacious crime that would baffle investigators for decades. Thus began one of the most audacious crimes in aviation history. As the plane soared high, a sinister plot was unfolding within its cabin. The nondescript man who had introduced himself as Dan Cooper was now revealing his true intentions. He had a bomb, and he was not afraid to use it. His demand was simple yet audacious. Four parachutes and $200,000 in $20 bills. The equivalent of this amount today would be a staggering $1.2 million. The authorities, faced with a critical situation, chose to comply. The plane landed in Seattle and the money and parachutes were delivered. Cooper, keeping up his end of the bargain, released the 36 passengers on board. However, he was far from done. He retained the crew members, two pilots, a flight engineer and a flight attendant. With the plane refueled and his demands met, Cooper was ready for the next phase of his audacious plan. He ordered the pilots to set course for Mexico City. But his instructions were peculiar. The plane was to fly under 10,000 feet at a speed slower than 200 knots. Such conditions were far from ideal for a commercial flight, yet they were crucial for Cooper's plan. As the night deepened, the plane continued its journey, flying low and slow between Seattle and Reno, Nevada. It was around 8 o'clock in the evening when the rear steps of the plane lowered. The man who had introduced himself as Dan Cooper was about to take a leap into infamy. And then in the cover of the night, Cooper made his daring escape. With a parachute strapped to his back and the stolen money in tow, he jumped from the plane into the frigid night air. The plane, the crew and the authorities were left behind. The man known as Dan Cooper had vanished into the darkness, beginning a mystery that would captivate the world for decades to come. The FBI was soon on the trail of the elusive D.B. Cooper. This tale of sky-high heist and disappearance prompted one of the longest and most exhaustive investigations in FBI history. Codenamed Norjack for Northwest hijacking, the operation was as monumental as it was complex. The agency found itself in a labyrinth of theories and leads with the enigmatic figure of Cooper at its center. Some believed that Cooper was military trained, perhaps even a paratrooper. His knowledge of planes, the area, and his audacious jump seemed to point to a man with a certain set of skills. But later on, the FBI decided that he was probably not an experienced skydiver. Why? Because the jump was too perilous, and he seemed oblivious to the fact that his reserve parachute was sewn shut for training purposes. The FBI scrutinized over 800 suspects in the first five years of the investigation. Almost all were eliminated. The tie Cooper discarded before making his daring exit served as a crucial piece of evidence. Based on DNA recovered from the tie, many were ruled out. One prime suspect was Richard Floyd McCoy, a man arrested for a similar crime just months later. Yet he too was eventually scratched off the list. 
Despite some striking similarities, McCoy just didn't match the descriptions given by two flight attendants. And let's not forget his dramatic prison break ending in a fatal shootout with law enforcement. The investigation was a colossal game of cat and mouse with the FBI tirelessly hunting a ghost. They chased down every lead, investigated every suspect and entertained every possible theory. Yet despite their relentless pursuit, D.B. Cooper remained a phantom. The exhaustive effort of the Bureau was not rewarded with the capture of the elusive hijacker. Instead, they were left with a pile of dead-end leads, innumerable theories and a mystery that seemed to deepen with every passing year. Despite their best efforts, the FBI was no closer to catching D.B. Cooper. Did Cooper survive his daring jump, or did he perish in the wilderness? This has been a burning question for over five decades. The speculations are as plentiful as they are varied. Some say he survived, while others are convinced he didn't. The truth? Well, that remains as elusive as Cooper himself. Many believe that Cooper's survival was unlikely, citing the harsh conditions he would have faced. The winds at that altitude were blowing at over 200 miles per hour, and the parachute he used wasn't steerable. Add to that, the landing area was rugged and heavily wooded. It's a scenario that would challenge even the hardiest of individuals. Still, there are those who believe that Cooper survived. They hold on to the fact that no body was ever found, but the most compelling piece of evidence that has fueled these speculations was the discovery in 1980. A young boy stumbled upon a decaying package containing $5,800 buried along the Columbia River, north of Portland and some 20 miles from Ariel. The serial numbers on the $20 bills matched those of the ransom. It was a tantalizing clue that suggested Cooper may have survived. Despite this discovery, nothing further was found. The absence of additional evidence left more questions than answers. The FBI continued to receive tips and leads, but all proved fruitless. Eventually, in 2016, the agency made a decision that surprised many. They officially closed the investigation, stating that their resources could best be used on other cases. It was an anticlimactic end to one of the longest and most exhaustive investigations in the history of the FBI. However, it didn't dampen the intrigue surrounding the case. If anything, it only added to the enduring mystery of D.B. Cooper. So what became of the nondescript man who hijacked a plane, extorted $200,000 and parachuted into the unknown? Did he outwit the law and live out his days in anonymity? Or did he meet his end in the unforgiving wilderness? The mystery of D.B. Cooper's fate remains unsolved. In the realm of unsolved mysteries, D.B. Cooper has achieved an almost mythic status. His audacious act of air piracy, followed by his vanishing act, has fascinated both law enforcement and the public alike. What's even more intriguing is the transformation of this criminal act into a tale of folklore, where D.B. Cooper is celebrated not as a villain, but as a folk hero. You see, folk heroes often emerge from extraordinary acts that challenge the status quo. They're the underdogs, the rebels, those who dare to take on the system. And in some ways, D.B. Cooper fits this bill. Here was an average man, nondescript, who took on the mighty institutions of an airline and the federal law enforcement and then disappeared into thin air. His story is not one of violent crime, but of a daring heist, a clever ruse and a Hollywood-style exit. The audacity of his act, the meticulous planning and the sheer gutsiness of his escape have all contributed to the making of this myth. His story has inspired songwriters, authors and filmmakers. Songs have been composed, weaving tales of his daring escapade. Books have been written, exploring the many theories about his identity and fate. Movies have been made, romanticizing his audacious act and his subsequent disappearance. The enduring fascination with D.B. Cooper's story is perhaps a reflection of our inherent attraction to unsolved mysteries and tales of rebellious audacity. It's the allure of the unknown, the thrill of the chase and the eternal question. What happened to D.B. Cooper? This fascination is not about glorifying crime, but rather it's about the human penchant for stories that defy norms, that challenge the system and that remain unsolved. It's about the legend of a man who in one daring act became larger than life. Whether he's a villain or a hero, one thing is for sure. D.B. Cooper has cemented his place in history. His story continues to intrigue, to inspire and to fuel the imaginations of those who dare to dream beyond the ordinary.